Welcome back to the office of puzzle solving mystery. Today we are solving the Hanayama cast elk puzzle. It is a level five out of six difficulty. However, I am skeptical because there's only two bits to it. And when there's two bits, it tends to not be as hard of a puzzle. However, I have been known to eat my words many times before when I predict how easily the puzzle will be solved. So, we won't jump to conclusions too quickly. So we will have a go at solving it, we will put it back together, and then we will rank the elk puzzle on our own difficulty scale and see where it ranks among all the others that we've done already. So here it is, the elk puzzle. It is literally just two bits elk, uh, the head of an elk and its antlers intertwined. We'll explore in a second whether they are identical or not, but the task is fairly simple. Just get them separated. So first things first, are they identical? Now, the only, well, the first bit that differentiates them is the bit on the back. That one says knob. No idea why it says knob, and that one says Haniyawa. Why does it say knob? Ah, because the Japanese designer is called Nob Yoshiga, Yoshigahara. So let's try and line them up so we can compare them. They do look the same. Now whether like that distance there is the same as that distance there, or just superficially looking at it, comparing that line to that line, it looks, it looks the same. The angles of these antler bits here look the same. And the length of these bits on top look the same. So I try and do this quite a lot, but the first thing that I always find helps is trying to figure out in which position they actually separate. It makes it seem like the limiting part is this bit here. That is a very, very small gap. Now can we, I guess, possibly we have to work it around so that this bit faces this bit. At the minute this bit, this puzzle feels quite similar to the H and H puzzle in terms of just moving bits around or through like a, a routine that eventually end in both bits being separated. So that feels good, getting it to that position. No idea whether it is good, but it feels good. Similar to the H and H puzzle, that one of the, yeah, the H and H was very hard to track the movements that you went through. It might be the same with this one. We will see whether that is true or not. So I guess it's all about finding the right angle for certain things to pass through other certain things. Like we can move that around there fairly simple, fairly simply. So I guess it's not going to be any of those moves that's going to help us make progress. It really doesn't feel like it's going to be uh, you have to make progress. It's more like, it feels more like it's just going to be one strange move and it's all going to come apart. I really can't see how how like it's going to be a, a routine if you like. It just seems like it's going to be one thing that comes apart or one position that has to be absolutely perfect and then it all just separates. I say it all, both bits just separate. There's a few positions where you think, right, I'm just, I feel so close to it just popping apart, but then you literally just do two, uh, an inch of movement and you're exactly back where you started. 20 minutes in and this is fairly frustrating right now, because I don't know what is progress and what isn't progress. I'm not even focusing on anything specific right now, I'm literally just moving it around, seeing what happens, see if we can get it into, into any position that feels like we haven't been there before. Nothing seems to seem like it's making progress just yet, but we will persevere. I actually think that this might be shorter than this side. Not just rounded. Yeah, 100% that is shorter. Let's have a look on this side. Hmm. Might even be shorter on that one as well. 
100% overall there to there is definitely longer than there to there, 100%. But is it just that side? So I find it easier with my skin as the background rather than the white background to see where the end is. That might be shorter as well. That's definitely shorter than that side. Hmm, no, maybe not with this one, but this one definitely is. So, right, what position does this need to be in to skip over something that every single other one can't skip over from? Excellent, okay. I think that is progress. I'm fairly confident that we found how it solves, or we found the reason for it solving, sorry, we've not found how it solves yet. But a hundred percent, I'm 95 percent sure that this is the reason it comes apart, that short thing there. Now it's just a case of putting it in the right position so it slides past something that every single other one of those pegs can't slide past. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but we separated it. Yes! Get in. We did it. We managed to solve the level five elk puzzle. It took about an hour and 10 minutes. And it was much, much harder than I anticipated at the start. With it just being two bits, you think, ah, it should be fairly straightforward. It's like a cross between the H&H &H puzzle and the Equa puzzle. It's like the H&H &H puzzle because it's two pieces that just move around each other. And it's like the Equa puzzle in terms of its solution. There is a very, very slight, almost unseeable to the naked eye difference in one single part of the echo puzzle and one single part of this puzzle that is the key to getting those puzzles apart. It's very fun to solve. It is a good looking puzzle as well. I, I like the ones that have themes to it and the elk puzzle, it's got elk's faces on it, how it's shaped like antlers. It's very cool, very cool. Always a nice finish, always a nice feel. It's actually lighter than anticipated and thinner, but still very well made, still good quality, just like all the other honey armors that we've sold before. Putting it back together was relatively simple. I had a little play around and sort of figured out how it was gonna go back together before I actually put it back together. But I mean, it took like less than two minutes to put back together in the end. Now, where does it rank? Is this the new hardest puzzle? No. Is this the new easiest puzzle? Definitely not. Somewhere in the middle. It's not the hardest, it's not the easiest. So shall we work our way up or shall we work our way down? Let's go up. So harder than, the, no, let's go start from down. Let's go down. So it is not as hard as the vortex puzzle. That's still the hardest. It is not as hard as the equal puzzle. Similar solution in terms of, well, what I explained before, but it's not as hard as that one. The cylinder, not quite as hard as that one, just because there's like six different variations where you can go wrong with the cylinder puzzle. Uh, the padlock puzzle, not quite as hard as that one. The H and H puzzle, again, the other one that I said it was similar to. Is it harder than that? Yes. Yes, the purely based on time. The H and H puzzle took us longer than the Elk one, so it is the Elk one is easier than that one. The dial puzzle, probably gonna say it is easier than the dial puzzle. So I think it's gonna land somewhere around these two. It's gonna be around the donuts and around the nutcase. Is the elk puzzle harder or easier than the nutcase? 
I, uh, the nut case, you have to be exactly spot on and in the perfect position for it to separate. The elk, you have to spot the millimeter difference in the length of the horns or pegs on the antlers to be able to solve it. Oh, it's a toss up between those two. I'd probably say the nut case is harder. The donut puzzle though, it is harder than the donut puzzle. So, the elk puzzle is gonna sit between the donut and the nut case puzzle. So that's it. Thank you very much for being here. If you wanna see some more videos, click those links just over there. If you wanna subscribe, if you wanna be entertained by me again in the future, then click my face just here. Comment below with whatever you want to comment below with and I'll see you next time. Peace!